know, guys. You can see that uh, cattle truck there turned over. That didn't look too good. Uh, usually, a lot of times when that happens, you cattle break legs or different things like that, and they end up having to put them down, which really stinks. But uh, <clears throat> going to across the aisle right now, headed on up to Washington again. Uh, cousins behind me, we uh, both picked up east-west units out of Elkhart, and they're both going to the same dealership in Monroe, Washington. So we're headed up there. As you can tell, I'm still in the Ford. I uh, haven't even uh, heard back from the uh, shop yet on my truck. I didn't hear from them by Friday of last week, so I went ahead and booked this load, and then I figured uh, I'll probably call them Wednesday or Thursday if I haven't heard from them and see what's going on and where we're at and, uh, you know, what, what we, time frame we're looking at on getting that back. So come through Chicago well when we left Elkhart yesterday heading towards Chicago it, it stormed pretty good we stayed on the outskirts of it thank, outskirts of it thankfully but I reckon up and back in uh, Goshen and places like that they got drilled with some uh, hail and all that it, it was it was a pretty nasty line of storms right now we're dealing with about 17 to 18 mile an hour winds from the side. Uh, pushing the camper pretty good. I'm keeping an eye on it. It's not within uh, what we have. mandatory shutdown, but just because that's what it says the shutdown is doesn't mean you should run until then. You, you gotta you gotta shut down when you feel comfortable or uncomfortable, if that makes sense. So you know what might be doable for me might not be doable for you and vice versa just like when uh, in law enforcement driving you know you don't you only want to drive at about 80 percent 90 percent was probably gonna be different than your 80 percent so something to keep in mind but uh yeah uh, I enjoy being in the Ford but man I'm, I, I missed Kenworth I'm I, really miss the extra money of the vehicles and no it doesn't vehicles don't pay a lot i mean i haven't even looked at them i haven't even been on central dispatch in a month so i don't know what vehicles are paying now with the fuel prices but the one thing i do miss is i always took that fuel money and, i mean not the fuel money i'm sorry i always took that car money and i put it up i put it into my maintenance account and stuff and that was the money I put up. And then the camper money was fuel and paying myself. Well, now I only have camper money. So that's fuel, paying myself, plus trying to put money up. So it makes a big difference. It really does. You know, and I've still got the payment on the truck and trailer every month. And I ain't made any money with that dang thing. So that's kind of been brutal. But hey, I'm surviving. Uh, it, it's hard to survive with these fuel prices right now, but I'm doing it. That's all that matters, and uh, we're just going to keep doing it. Keep doing what we can do until we can't do it anymore. It's all you can do. So, I'm going to get on up the interstate here. We're uh, going to try to get up here to... Uh, we come across 80 and then go up 29 and get on 90. This is the route we prefer. This is the route we always run when we go out to... Uh, Washington because we hate going up around Chicago and just absolutely even though we get reimbursed the tolls there's just so freaking many up and up through there it's just it's just a pain in the butt so this is the route we prefer uh not good fuel prices but we do get a couple you know discounted spots that we know going across through here so right now we're trying to get up to the uh, TA Express in Vermilion uh, I think it's South Dakota 
And uh, we're gonna get some fuel there and we'll try to find us a shower and then we're gonna keep on trucking. So I'll holler at you guys later. Hey, what's going on guys? Whew. Driving right into the sun, it's brutal. So after I finished that clip yesterday where I was talking about the wind, uh, we drove for a little bit and uh, we had to shut down for a few hours. Let the wind die down because it did get up. It was about 22, 23 mile an hour sustained and we just decided that we would shut down for a little while and let it die down because looking at the clock or looking at the <clears throat> weather it was going to die down later in the afternoon so we decided to stop and let that die down so then we uh, drove our clock out and then got delayed today because of wind so we got started about four hours later than we wanted to because of the wind again so we're going to be driving late tonight so we can uh, make our delivery on time tomorrow that's part of it that's part of your uh prepping and just checking and keeping an eye on things and uh you know the wind's been brutal the last couple days i know some people were posting pictures it was you know 37 mile an hour sustained up here in montana which we're in montana right now and the wind not blowing much at all so that's because we waited for it to die down before, before we left out today so yeah it's a uh, doesn't help the fuel prices when you're driving into about a 17 mile an hour headwind which we were earlier before the wind completely died down so yeah we're gonna get on up hopefully might make it all the way up before we stop tonight and then deliver tomorrow but not sure we might stop take our break and then then go so either way we Still got to take our time off and uh, make we drive. So. But, uh, yeah, it's been pretty uneventful other than the wind. So, just to get my little through here. Noticed that uh, all the uh, entrances to Yellowstone was closed. And I guess it was to do with some flooding from the snow mountain and different things, talking about the rivers and stuff. Long one here right now, and they are full. So I really hate that. I know they had to evacuate a bunch of people out of there and all that. And it really stinks for the people that were trying to come out and you know visit the park for you know, some big tourist time. And like they were talking about uh, the Livingston, which everybody knows Livingston. If you come across Nani here, uh, you know that's one of the most traveled routes into Yellowstone. They said, and of course. That, that, that entrance is going to be closed probably the rest of the season, they said. So that's really going to hurt them. That stinks because it ain't a good time. We're going to be losing out on their money, but, so, but I hadn't heard anything about it. And I just started seeing a few articles and then those signs that said it was closed. And I was talking to my wife about it and she was saying, talking about the flood and stuff. So, well, we're going to get on up the road here and I'll get with you guys later. What's up guys, here getting checked in. Uh, we did not make our nine o'clock appointment. So we got you know, the wind and all put us back, so we didn't make our nine o'clock appointment. Uh, we called them this morning, let them know. They said they'd try to work us in. But we got here at one, a little before one, when they come back from lunch, and uh, the gentleman said, well, it was a good thing you all came in late it gave them a chance to catch up here or whatever he said one o'clock's done coming gone we don't have anybody else so they're getting us right in which is good and it you know it was actually better for them not an inconvenience so that worked out good because we kind of felt bad for being late but it was what it was because wasn't nothing we could do about it with the wind so uh, my cousins he'll get checked in next and then uh we'll get back on the road so I'm going to just jump on here and let you guys know that we have made it and we're getting checked in and we'll get out of here.